Electronic Arts, i.e. EA, a sincere thank you. Very sincere. I'm your host, Tony. This is Richie. Thank you for joining me, Richie, today on Hard for Games Gaiden. I'm glad to be here. Now, if you haven't watched Hard for Games Gaiden before, it is our sideshow to Hard for Games where we talk about gaming news, gaming topics, whatever's on our mind, essentially. So basically, EA pissed off more than just their fan base uh, with Star Wars Battlefront 2, loading it with not necessary, but essentially necessary microtransactions, loot boxes, you all that stuff. You don't have to play as Darth Vader. You can play as the Stormtrooper. Yeah. It'll be as much fun. Or you can, you know, just play for hours and hours and grind and grind and grind and grind and grind. And, uh, you know, eventually, in a couple years, once Star Wars Battlefront 3 comes out, you can finally unlock Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just got to pull yourself up from your bootstraps and... Like, 800 hours later, you'll be Darth Vader. Nothing more American than that. Nothing more American. <laughs> so, essentially, uh, people backlashed against this because they just filled it with these loot boxes, microtransactions, all this stuff. Uh, they've since disabled the microtransactions, leaving behind a super grindy game. Uh, but not before their stock took uh, a bit of a dive and the company lost $3.1 billion uh, USD worth of value. I say that they pissed off more than just their fan base because gamers in general rallied, and even uh, so, I hear Disney got involved because that's you know Star Wars is their <laughs> property. You, you know, Richie, EA is kind of the uh, Comcast of video game companies in my mind. Both can be pretty awful. Both are uh, essentially so big that nobody can tell them no, and they thrive on bad business practices. Uh, you could argue that you could just not use Comcast, of course, but keep in mind they do hold a monopoly in some areas like when we went to U of M, for example. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would, for example, uh, in Ann Arbor, I don't know if it's still this way, but Comcast was uh, the law of the land. You got Comcast or you didn't have internet, and they would just frequently go down during exam week. <laughs> and and uh, this happened to both me and my wife. Uh, and they would just be like, well, just did you reset your router? And they're like, yeah, bro, I did. And they'd be like, well, did you like, are you sure? <laughs> and be like, yes, I did. Like, okay, we'll send someone out, like, I don't know, like six days, like after your exams. It's like, oh, sweet, thanks, thanks, dude. Um, now, I, I'm to bring this comparison to a close here, EA is kind of the same in my mind. Uh, granted, you know, you don't have to buy EA games. Obviously, I generally don't. I know you do a little bit more with the sports titles. Yeah, I I mean, I I kind of tapered off the okay. last the last couple of years. I I feel like the quality because FIFA was a big one for me. I I yeah. really like the FIFA franchise. It's kind of been on the down slope these last mm -hmm. few years though, so I haven't I haven't been playing it as closely as I have. And then there were some big titles here and there that I, I did enjoy. And one of the mm. things that I really, one of the things I think is a good comparison between EA and Comcast. I mean, you have a lot more options with video games than mm. you do with Comcast, especially if you like include like indie developers and things like of course. that. There's there's yeah. a lot more options. But if you're looking for like AAA games, mm. you're pretty much gonna have to go through EA, Activision. Mm. Ubisoft, yeah. arguably Nintendo. Mm. <laughs> arguably. I mean, they're not, <laughs> uh, they're not like 4K beast machine sure, sure, type sure. of AAA, yeah, but they're, I understand. they're still yeah, definitely yeah. AAA titles. I'm just, they're good looking 3D games. I'm, I'm poking a good recovery. Uh, no, yeah, but like, basically, yeah, you, I mean, I agree, you don't have to get uh, EA games, but if you are looking for that experience, and I think more importantly, if you are looking for specific properties that they own the, the license to, right because you know you don't necessarily have to play them but let's say you're itching for like a star wars game you know like that's i mean that's yay i believe i don't i don't know if any other developers have the rights to that i, I don't but, think they do uh maybe correct us if we're wrong in the comments but you know when a developer has the exclusive rights you know it's just like they you know with the madden series they're the only ones that have the nfl rights so it used to be back in the day, you know, play on the Genesis or the Super Nintendo, you know, you'd have a bunch of different games that just so long as the developers and publishers or whatever could pay for those licensing rights, you'd get an NFL game. You'd have a bunch of different NFL titles. Right. Now it's like if you want NFL, 
you have to go yay right so that's kind of where that that comparison draws in yeah you don't have to pay yeah you don't have to play uh, an ea game but if you're itching for that you, you, you kind of don't you don't really have so much of a choice i guess and that's that's kind of why i'm glad that they bungled this so badly that's the thank you yeah that is my thank you to ea because i play a lot of paradox games mm -hmm. they they make strategy games i i'm big long scale strategy games okay and they're full of content but they've kind of moved toward the more modern pricing model of things where the initial release of the game is almost always a little bit of a skeleton yeah and they they support it greatly with dlc but mm. but that's more money out of yeah. your pocket and sure. it, they've been kind of getting some backlash for that practice but it's it's kind of split the community more than it has unified the community against them. Mm -hmm. Which is why I'm kind of glad that EA did such a bad job with this and made the fans <laughs> just say, F this is bull. Yeah. We're not going to stand for it. Sure. So that maybe someday I won't have to go back to the 1990s and play LucasArts games to have a solid Star Wars experience. Yeah, exactly. Which so is nothing bad about those games. They're fantastic games. But yeah. sometimes I like to play games that were made in the last 30 years. Sure, yeah. You he, know, he, like, in my lifetime. Richie's, like, really digging at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that this is kind of multi-layered. You know, you mentioned that this may have a warning effect for all of these other developers. You know, where it's like, maybe they're, they're itching to do stuff more like this, but this whole EA microtransaction bungle might kind of, like, kind of kind of pull them away a, a little bit. Now, as far as EA goes, I think that that is also a good warning sign for them because, you know, I was thinking back. I, I think the last EA title that I had purchased was the NBA Jam title for Wii. And I think that was like 2010 or something <laughs> like that. And I remember when I booted it up, I didn't realize it was EA. And I saw the EA logo and I was like, ugh. Did you think it was a claim still? Well, I didn't. The long I, defunct acclaim. I don't. I didn't. I don't know if I thought it was a claim. I just remember being disappointed when I saw that it was EA. I don't remember the reason why, but I, I just know that there's been so much bad press about EA doing all these crappy things. You know, they were. You know, nowadays it's not a big deal, or at least more normalized. But for example, they were known for like day one DLC. Uh, and I still think that's a pretty shitty practice. Yeah, just like they've always been the pioneers of crap. <laughs> essentially you know what i mean um again like the comcast of of uh video games but you know they've kind of been like so sketchy for so long and there's always been like these little like niche protests against them but like this was more like wham you know like oh wow like kind of like woke the bear a little bit so maybe they'll change maybe they won't i mean who knows maybe they'll just lie low and then go back to the way they were um i i do think that what you mentioned will probably be more important in the long run i'm wondering in, in terms of uh monetary value what sort of effect this will have on ea because I, we were taking a look at their stock earlier and they were going real well pre uh 2008 then it had a, a crash as most stocks did lost a lot of their value in the, the great recession and they just kind of finally got that value back in 2015. I was surprised that it took that long to kind of to recoup it. Maybe partially because the bad press kept it down. I don't know. But when you take a look at that 3.1 billion loss, yeah, I mean, it's a visible dip. But it's not like catastrophic looking. You know no. what I mean? Like, I think people are making a bigger deal out of the monetary loss than it actually is. Right. I mean... What is, like, the overall value of EA, period? Do you know? Well, they said that it lost around 8%, and that was $3.1 Right. So you could so, say 10% is, like, 3.5 So there's like still, that. like, there's still a $30 billion company. Something akin to that, yeah. Right. So it's not like suddenly EA is in the poorhouse. Yeah, they're, they're firing their board of directors right now. <laughs> like, not gonna happen. You know, especially after those sweet tax breaks they're about to get from uh, <laughs> Congress. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. But that said, you know, I mean, I, I just think that this video is really about thanking EA for being EA. Because they really EA'd themselves in the EA mm -hmm. this time around, yeah, it, I'd say. This is what they need to do to win our trust back. What's that? 
Szechuan sauce. Oh, I if like that. If they can fix McDonald's major breakdown, yeah. I will forgive this breakdown. <laughs> you get a free Szechuan sauce packet with every uh, Madden uh, 2019. <laughs> but seriously, though, I, I just want a good Star Wars game. Is it is that so much to ask? You know, the thing is, is that with Star Wars, I think back in the back on the SNES, you have your, like your your Star Wars Super Star Wars trilogy, right? And Star Wars was big but it was pre-resurgence right so if people were to buy that game it had to be a good game right right because word of mouth had to spread and it had to be it had to be solid so i think especially with the bigger licenses it's not necessarily everybody's doing this but i do think it's easier to be lazy and just say well it's star wars it will sell no matter what we do you know what not only will it sell but let's have it sell more Let's make you pay, 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 pay. And, you know, you want to be Darth Vader? Boom. And you know people do because, I mean, if you take a look at, you know, uh, Rogue One, for example. Did you see Rogue One? Yes. Okay, so, you know, I thought it was a pretty decent film, but they just chucked it so full of fan service. Like, we're going to have the walkers. We're going to have the TIE fighters. We're going to have this. We're going to have that. Hey, remember this. Hey, remember that. Hey, do you remember Grandma Tarkin? Do you remember... Uh, Grand, Grand Grand Moff, Moff, Moff Tarkin. Tarkin. <laughs> yeah, I, I always say Grandma Tarkin. Grandma um, Tarkin. <laughs> but you know, so far as they're like, let's uh, CG Leia. Hey, remember Leia, guys? Remember? You know, just like the, the uh, South Park episode. Remember? Remember? You know, the member berries. <laughs> you know, so people want that so bad because it's just part of their their uh, Star Wars psyche that they're gonna pay for it. So I, I do to wrap that point up. I do think it's easier to be lazy and have a crappy Star Wars game because you don't have to deal with the repercussions of it not selling, except for now. Right. Be because there were all those pictures of Black Friday, like, you know, all the games are gone on the shelf, <laughs> but that game was still on the shelf, like, not even touched. I mean, think about it this way. You know, it's so easy to get uh, people to play a Star Wars game that John always talks about playing Star Wars Galaxies, and he said that he loved the community and that he had so much fun trolling people, but it was a broken, broken game. He said it was amazing, but it was also amazingly broken. So much so that he spent like three years playing <laughs> that game, you know? And and, and uh, like that was his primary title right. that he played during that time. He just loved it so much. And do you think that he would have ever even discovered that game if it didn't have the Star Wars license? Or do you think that it would even ever have had a great community uh, and, and you could do all these antics if it wasn't? Uh, a licensed Star Wars game. It was just a broken, random, sort of MMO style, you know, right. game. Obviously not. Yeah, so, you know, it, it's... It basically, you gotta, you gotta have the big bucks, but then it, from there, it can be easy sailing. Uh, but, that said, I do think that this is a warning shot across the bow, so to speak, where they're like, oh, well, geez, this one didn't actually sell. What the hell happened? You know, what do we do next time? Which I think will be really telling. So that said, I would like to know everybody's thoughts on the situation in the comments below. Not just whether you hate EA or not, but of course feel free to let us know that, but whether you think EA will learn anything, whether you think other developers will learn anything, whether EA stock will bounce back immediately and we'll just forget about this in a month, you know? Those are the sort of th things that I would like to hear uh, your opinions on. And I, I'd also like to know how bad you think a EA christmas special star wars game would be <laughs> or amazing so bad that it's good who knows yeah exactly you could uh one of the loot boxes would be chewbacca's family <laughs> 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 or or luke star or i was about to say star luke killer star walker i was about to say uh star killer that was his original name in the, the script uh or a loot box where luke skywalker has a very aggressive tan <laughs> I think I think that was the thing. I remember when I watched it, seeing Luke Skywalker, and something looked like very off with his skin tone. Like I, I think I'd have to double check, but I think he just has a very aggressive tan. Well, I mean, he grew up on Tatooine. There's two he, suns. Yeah, but he, there. but he was like orange or something. We'll have to take a look afterwards. Two suns, two man. Suns, yeah, you yeah. haven't lived a day under two suns. I only have one sun. It's hectic enough. <laughs> uh, so that said, you know, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, if you're looking for ways to support the show, please comment, like, share all that good stuff, or join us on our Patreon-only Discord chat. Links in the description below, and uh, we will see you guys next time. 
Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share, and we will see you guys next time.